No one's buying NVIDIA's new RTX 4060 Ti. Swish for the good guys. US retailer Micro Center only ordered a handful of cards for each location and decided against opening early in response to what they describe as zero consumer interest in the GPU. In Japan, when two retailers in Tokyo's popular Akihabara district, I'm sorry, I haven't been to Japan, guys, opened for launch, they were met with a crowd filled with customer. Not one customer per store, just one literal guy. Uh, meanwhile, European retailers are already selling the card below MSRP, presumably due to low demand. Adding insult to injury, Intel cut the price of its ARC A750 to exactly half the price of the 4060 Ti, making it a way better value proposition for 1080p gaming and AV1 encoding. And your wallet. Poor Jensen Wang must be crying all the way to the bank as the company's stock exploded by almost 30% due to their AI chip market. Yeah, while us small fish are lambasting Team Green for trying to rip us off, enterprise whales are sucking down their overpriced krill and asking for seconds, launching Nvidia toward a $1 trillion evaluation. It's Jensen's damn leather jacket. It's too powerful for one man to possess. An eating disorder helpline has decided to fire their six paid staffers and 200 volunteers and replace them with a chatbot. But before you get mad, you should know that the chatbot's name is Tessa, so... Oh, does that not change anything? Anyway, NEDA, NETA, NEDA, the National Eating Disorders Association, has operated a helpline for 20 years. But after the small staff organized a union vote to get the organization to expand staffing, NEDA's board chair told the employees that they were ending the helpline program and transitioning to all Tessa all the time on June 1st. That's soon. A NEDA spokesperson told Vice that Tessa is not a replacement for the helpline. Of course not. They're just ending the helpline and using the chatbot in its place. What a mouthful to say. I wish there was a word for that. It's <laughs> repl- It's on the tip of my tongue. Replicoid. Unethical. <laughs> helpline staffers are concerned Tessa won't be able to replace the experience of talking to a human. And Dr. Fitzsimmons Craft, who led the team that created Tessa, agrees. What could a professor of psychiatry at Washington University's medical school possibly know of mental health treatment? It's Washington. They can't even decide on their last name. And Sony streamed their PlayStation Showcase on Wednesday and made the bold decision to showcase very little of the PlayStation. We All got a Xbox. Really? No. We got a gameplay reveal trailer for Alan Wake 2 coming to PS5 and PC. Bungie decided to revive their Marathon IP, which were a series of three single player FPS games. Only now, instead of that, it's a multiplayer only team based PvP extraction shooter, which makes perfect sense to. Someone. Thanks, Larry. Seemingly inspired by Bungie's bravery, Square Enix decided to revive Nintendo's very much alive Splatoon IP, a series about squid and octopus people shooting ink all over the place as the same game, but with generic anime protagonists shooting foam all over the place this time. Then, seemingly inspired by that small bit of Nintendo plagiarism, Sony formally announced they are reviving the Wii U gamepad as a screen sandwiched between two halves of a DualSense controller. Genius! This Project Q, worst name ever, will allow you to remotely play games on your PS5 over Wi-Fi, something that must be popular among Sony staff and probably no one else. QAnon, maybe? <laughs> Some think this could eventually be part of some counter move to Xbox Cloud Gaming by Sony, since the company is currently overhauling its cloud gaming offering, perhaps to make the clouds more foam-like. Foam stars coming soon. We're stuck on Splatoon. Now it's time for the Quick Bits, brought to you by The Ridge, the company that brought you these Quick Bits. <laughs> Finding the perfect Father's Day gift can be tough, but The Ridge has made it easy with one of their biggest sales of the year. Their wallet is designed to be both stylish and functional, with room for up to 12 cards and cash, baby, and cash is king. You can be king, all while remaining slim and compact, the wallet that is, but also you. Plus, their wallets come in 30 plus colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt Damascus, which makes you sound cool when you say them out loud. Burnt Damascus. Damascus. For added security, the Ridge wallets are made with an RFID blocking material, so you can just wear them and no one's gonna scan your junk. Head to the link in the description and get something nice, like a Ridge wallet for your dad, who may be me, or your dad's dad, or your son's dad. I'm none of those though. Quick bits, quick bits, quick bits, quick bits! Elon Musk's Neuralink has received FDA approval to stick brain implants into the brains of living humans, which the company announced on Elon Musk's Twitter. I mean, all Twitter's Elon Musk's Twitter. 
Elon claimed in December that Neuralink was six months away from sticking a chip in some guy. And after an investigation into Neuralink staff complaints about the needless deaths of 1,500 non-human animals, and an investigation into the company for the possible unsafe transport of hardware contaminated with infectious pathogens, Elon's prediction came true for once. Is there anything he can't predict other than everything else? Several marriages ending? OpenAI's much more Boy Scouty CEO, Sam Altman, was in the news yesterday after he threatened to cease operating in the EU due to proposed AI regulations. Obviously, Mr. Altman stands in stark disagreement with AI leaders like Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, who a week ago urged the US Congress for AI regulations, acknowledging AI's potential impact on jobs. Yet just today, Mr. Altman seems to have changed his mind on the EU's regulations, saying OpenAI has no plans to leave. It seems Mr. Altman was able to convince Mr. Altman to change his mind. Mr. Altman's, that is. Yes, of course. We all love Mr. Altman. Scientists have discovered a new antibiotic to treat a drug-resistant superbug called Ancinatobacter <laughs> baumanelli. Ancinatobacter baumanelli. That sounds like a Vietnamese sandwich. Their derp, their derp, <laughs> their deep learning model is able to narrow over 6,000 novel chemical compounds to 240 prospectives that were then tested in the lab. Nine of those were potential antibiotics with one showing strong suppression of the deadly superbug. Of course, none of this would have been necessary if we just stopped giving bacteria capes. No capes. Or twisty mustaches. HP, the company known for preventing customers from using third-party ink, is doing it again, but with a fun new twist. Their best-selling printers offer a time-limited offer for HP+, Plus, which gives six months of free ink and an extended warranty, but will lock your printer into only working with HP inks, even if you cancel after. The thing is, these HP products have the EP Eco label, which prohibits this behavior. All in all, HP+, Plus is a bad value proposition. I mean, it doesn't even have any original programming. Nothing. They just licensed Disney no stuff. Night. And McDonald's China is celebrating the year of the chicken, McNugget, with a giant nugget that plays Tetris. Did I put a T on the end of that? It's a sad Tetris. It's a, <laughs> whatever. For a limited time, to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the worldwide release of the McNugget, you can buy an officially licensed handheld version of the popular puzzle game for a mere 30 yuan, or $4.25. Or you could before they instantly sold out. Of course they did. Gamers can't resist chicky nuggies. Tendies, baby. Just like you won't be able to resist coming back on Monday for more tech news. And if you bring me tendies, I'll teach you how to grow facial hair from somewhere other than your neck. Here's a hint. Genetics. Hot parents, guys.